All right, so let's talk about creating neon tubes and glowing shapes with 3ds Max and V-Ray. So this is fairly easy to do. There's a couple of things which you need to know. The material is really simple. You want a V-Ray light material. And to get this, you need to open your material editor. To open the material editor, you can click on this, or you can left click, hold down, and then you can go into your compact material editor if you like. But I like working in the slate because I can see immediately what I'm doing and all of the different uh, nodes that are connected here. So that's why I like this one. So if you don't have V-Ray here, you need to go into your render settings up here and you need to make sure this render is set to V-Ray. All right, then you're gonna open your V-Ray and you need a V-Ray light materials, so just double click on this, bring this over and you're gonna need to create some text here. So what I've done is, you know, if you click up here on this create tab and you go over here to the splines, you click down here on text and then I always go in top view. So here and just click and you get this max text comes up by default. Um, now these normally are unchecked. So normally it'll be like that. And then you can type whatever you want in here and you can change your font, choose whatever you want to go with. doesn't really matter. Just something which you like. And then you can adjust the size. You can also adjust the kerning here, just how far apart the letters are. And you can adjust the leading. If you have two lines, you know here you can adjust your leading to pull that further away or bring it closer together. So that's what these are. For our purposes, they're irrelevant. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is with the text which I've created here, I've created three separate lines. If I press Alt Q, if I select it, press, make sure to select it, you've got to be here on select. So select it, Alt Q will isolate it. To unisolate, you can click on this, come back out of isolation. But Alt Q isolates, or you can click on that to isolate. And then what you need to do is go into your rendering, and, sorry, this is an editable spline. If you're, you don't have to convert it to an editable spline. You can leave it as text. If you leave it as text, you know, you've just got here rendering, enabling rendering, enabling viewport, and then you've got your thickness. How thick do you want these to be? So you can select there and how many sides you want it to have, you know? So, you know, you can go higher if you need to, but normally that should be fine. And I'm gonna press F4 just so you can see what it looks like. And that's it. So, you can right click. What I've done here is I've had it where I wanted to and for various reasons I've right clicked and I've clicked convert to editable spline. And in editable spline you've got a whole bunch of other settings here but again you still have rendering, enabling rendering, enabling viewport and your radial settings here. All right I'm just going to delete that. So we take this and you open your material editor again and you get your light material and you basically you just assign this to there. And then what you're going to do is close this, just go to Maps, General, open that up, and you need to fall off. Just double click on there and put this into the light color. And the reason we're doing this um, is because if you look at some reference images, you see here, see how this neon tube is darker here on the outside and lighter on the inside? And this green here, there's a dark bit of green on the outside here, and it's lighter there. Um, here the blue is very definitely darker on the outside and lighter on the inside. So it just adds a bit of extra depth. Like if I just have this and if I just change this and I make this, I don't know, red, let's say. I don't like putting everything, anything to absolute. So let's try this at about seven, seven and drop this down to two. Four, five, which is still probably a bit high. Two, four, six, okay. But if I leave it like that, and then I render, uh, if I just bring this up, I just need to render this area. So I'm just going to click here, which is a region render, and just show you that. You see how it's just a solid color? It doesn't get lighter in the middle like those other references did. So what we're going to do is take a fall off. I can just copy this color and I just right click to copy it, drag this full off, put it into the light color, double click on this. Now, 
here it says front and side, and that means black is directly looking on, that's your front, and it's going to be white on the sides. So the white, we want that red, and then we're going to put, just left click and drag that over there, copy it in, and then I'm just going to come in here and make this a bit lighter. And now if I press F9 just to render the previous viewport, you can see here, okay, so that's too light, and there's also too much light here. So what I'm going to do is take this fold off, click here on this add a point, put it in here, right click on that, Bezier Smooth, make this, whoops, right click should have allowed me to, I've put an extra point here by accident, just control Z to get rid of that. Right click will move this from here, add point over to moving. So if I right click, I just didn't right click earlier. And then drag this, make that about here. And now you can see, if you look here at what it's doing, if I drag this up, see I get more darkness, but I still get the light in the middle. So now if I press F9, I should see more darkness here on the edge. I get a bit more. Not a lot, but a bit. So we're going to drag this up a bit more. Close this down a bit. And you can put this fall off. There's no rule on where this fall off needs to be, but it's just whatever you think looks correct. And to be honest, I think that light in the middle is too light, so we're going to come back a bit here. Uh, maybe a bit more. No. Yeah, maybe let's try there. And you can just adjust these until you get something which you like. So I kind of like that. That looks good. All right, now the next thing, so we've got these different colors here. I'm just going to go back and put the orange back on here. And the reason this is white and there it was red was because in here I haven't changed this color. And this fall off, I've got these curves. I know we just did a different one for the red, but like I said, you can do this to, to whichever, however you like it to be. So now the important thing here is if I turn this off, it's a bit odd. You've got over here, you've got open lens effect settings, which brings up a panel on this side, and this is your other one, show corrections control, which brings it up on that side. So we don't need the corrections, but we do need this lens effect. And really we need bloom. We can also use glare, but we're going to use bloom. Now, the problem with bloom is it's going to apply it to all lights by default. So you come up here and, you know, you get this glowing effect, but there's a, a V-ray light here above, you see, in the scene. And it's shining down on it, so it's blooming everything out. And that's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to use these and we can use either object ID or material ID. So obviously here you can also use intensity, but here we're going to do this. So if we set material ID and I get this little error message because it's not rendered this before and it will only work on what, like I can't change this after a render. So here I've got material ID one. And if I go into my material settings here, material editor, if I take this material, I can change this. This is zero. I can put it to one. Put that to one. Put that to one. And I also have my little logo over there. So that's just, I've set that to four. Let's set that to one. All right. So that's your material ID. So by doing this, I can then render. And you have to wait a bit. It'll go along. I've got this set to I've got this set to progressive, so it'll render for about thirty seconds, and then I'll be able to then see this bloom applied. And then I can adjust these and get it to to look how I how I want it to look. All right, I'm gonna stop it here. So basically, this is the weight. This is how much the bloom is. How much of it's occurring. And here is the size of the bloom. You can make it bigger or smaller. And this is the shape. So, you know, if you come bigger, how much does it follow the shape of the letters? And if you come in here, it'll follow the shape more. So you basically just adjust these until you get it to something that you think looks good. And let's say you like that. So that's it. That's, that's basically what you do. Now I'll show you a couple of other things. See how this works with the neon tubes. All right. And by doing this, we, we keep the bloom out 
from the other lights in the scene. So this is what you're going to use. Whenever you have neon tubes, you don't want all of your lights having bloom and glare on, but this is what you're going to use. So also you can turn on glare. And with glare, what we're going to do is we're going to also put it on material ID. Let's turn off the object ID. All right, material ID one. And we're going to render that. Okay, gonna stop this here. All right, so just to get an idea of what the glare's doing, we can turn this off here and on. And if I turn bloom off here, uh, you can again see the weight and the size. And you can play around with these and get an idea of what this is doing. But it's sometimes nice to use both of these together Although, when you turn on glare, it tends to reduce the bloom effect. If I turn this off, see, the bloom kind of comes more. But it can be nice. So you have to do, again, like I said, figure out what you like. If you like glare being on like this, and you like bloom being on like that, then that's fine. But if you just want bloom, turn it off and just work with that. Now, also, you'll see they've got object ID. So just to cover that quickly, you can turn on object ID. And if you're going to do object ID, what you need to do is select the objects. So here I'm going to just press control and select these different objects and then right click and object properties. And then here you've got object ID and you can set this to anything you want. And normally we'll set all of the different objects to different IDs, but you know, if you want to have it being controlled uh, with the bloom and glare, then you can come in and you can, instead of using materials, can use objects. Now this might be really useful, you know, if you want bloom on the materials and you've got other lights you want to have a glare on, so you can, you know, pick and choose and change these things around. And you can also have, you know, a glare on material ID 2 and also on object ID blah. So you can play with this. Maybe you've got headlights of a car and you want to put it on there. So, you know, play around and see what you need to be, see what you want to do. For now I'm just going to use the material IDs. And by doing this, we'll get that fantastic glowing effect happening here. Now, one other thing to show you, which is why I turned these to editable splines in the first place, is because I know someone's going to take this, they can have a client, the client's going to say, okay, it needs to say blah, 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 blah. And then they'll look at this tutorial, and then you'll be going, I've got double lines. So if you want to have double lines, just something which you need to control is, and I'll just do this here. I'll do this with all of these, actually is turn off this enabling render and enabling viewport, and I'm gonna do that for all of them. And then what I'm gonna do is just extrude. All right, if you end up with this problem, where you try to extrude, or let's say we're gonna put an extrude modifier here, you see, and see how it's all messed up. And basically what's happening is it's trying to extrude upwards, because it's always gonna try and go upwards. So what we need to do, delete this, take these three shapes, go in my top view, just press T for top, Z for zoom, or Z for zoom. Just take this and rotate this 90 degrees. And I've got angle snaps on here. So right here you can right click. You have to turn that on you can right click here and you can check, set your angle to five degrees on each click. So it's going by five degrees. So now what I need to do is I need to come in here, reset X form, reset these, right click, convert to edible spline, and then spin them back 90 degrees. And now it knows which way, it knows when I extrude it's gonna come out towards me. So to speed it up, I'm gonna take all three and put an extrude on and set this to 10. And now that's fine. And let's just zoom in, yeah, that's good. So you can see the weight here, the size, the amount that's come up. You can come back less if you'd like. You can come back by 5 mil. But it's up to you. So then what I'm going to do is take my materials. The problem now is because I've got the fall-offs, gonna, it's going to render out a little bit weird if I click F9. You see how here it's dark on this edge and dark on these edges, and it looks very flat. 
So you can use that if that's the effect you want to have, but that's not the effect I want to have. So what I'm going to have to do is come in here, and I can't fix this. The way I'm going to fix it, I can't fix it with um, this V-Ray Light material. So I'm going to click here, right click, and I'm going to change this to a V-Ray material. And so now that's been assigned directly to the top one, to the top um, shape here. And we're just going to do the same with these, just so I don't have to. By doing this, I don't have to reassign the material. It just knows and does it. By doing this, it just assigns the material already to it. So now I'm going to take this fall off, and I'm going to put this into self loom at the bottom here. And this into self loom, And this into self loom. And what I need is I need to handle the edges, and we're going to handle that with this V-Ray Map uh, Edges Texture. Just drag and put that into the bump slot. And you can leave the bump. Bump by default is set to 30 if you go down to Maps, and that should be fine. And you just come in here and change this, and I'm going to set this to 10. And I think for this size, that should be all right. And then we're going to take this and put it into the bump on these. Into that bump. And now what happens when I render is it basically tricks the edge into thinking it's uh, not smooth. It's, it's the same as putting a chamfer on, or it's going to try and act the same as putting a chamfer on those edges. And it's doing it by a centimeter. So now I get this effect. And I like this effect. And if I want it more, you know, maybe I'm not quite happy with that. I can just come in here, because I've got this one on all three of them. I can just adjust this one. It'll adjust everything. And I'm going to come and set this to, th let's set it to 10 centimeters, which is more than this is. So if we have a look, I think that's maybe two centimeters across. But it's going to really try and bend the edges. See, so you can see the effect here. You can see the effect down here. It's really trying to deal with it there. But because these edges are, they're about as thick as that, right? And what is that, five? So they're about seven, actually. They're about seven centimeters. So yeah, if we set this to, oh, that's five mil, sorry. If we set this to seven mil, that should be more than enough. Yeah, there you go. It doesn't look weird. We don't have anything odd going on. And that's having the effect that we want it to have. This yellow one for me is a little bit bright, but it's also got more of the light shining directly on it. So we're going to come in here and just darken this. And I'm going to darken this guy too. And just make sure if you're using Material ID, when you create new materials here, we're going to need to put the Material ID into these new materials as well, because they're not going to take the same Material ID the other one had before. And that's it. That's how to create glowing shapes, how to create glowing signs, how to create um, neon tubes, and how to get them to glow in your scenes. Good luck.